Oh, you son of a what now? Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Rancher. Now, yesterday I replaced my clutch master cylinder. My Willwood one actually went out, and I had a big old mess in here. It ripped off part of my firewall, the paint on my firewall. A uh, huge mess. So I went ahead and I replaced that, uh, replaced some of the lines, and then I bled the system, and I was on my way. As soon as I started driving, it felt a little bit off, but I just kept driving. Uh, I went like three, four, five blocks down that way. And as soon as I got onto a, a long, narrow street, I started to accelerate a little bit, and it just didn't didn't feel right. I kept driving for about a mile or two, and then I started to slow down. I glanced over at my FRs. My FRs are super lean, but the engine wasn't running lean, if that makes sense. So I, I got to a stop, and it was just chugging, chugging, chugging. And I kept driving, um, and I got to the next gas station, and I pulled over, and I popped it up. And that thing was just, it didn't want to idle. It wasn't running lean because usually when it's running around 18, 20, 22 to 1, it, it just doesn't run. But it was still running, which tells me that it's not um, an AFR issue. Uh, it's probably something else. Um, so what I did, let me show you guys. So let's start this up. Just two pumps. Slightly hold it open. And let's start this up. Let me make sure I'm in neutral. There we go. It's on. As you guys can see, it's chilling at 20 to 1, 21 to 1. As soon as I start letting off, it doesn't quite change. And it really doesn't want to idle. If I rev it up to about 3,000, actually gets a lot better but it's still missing quite a bit okay so we got a little bit of diagnosis to do like you can easily hear a misfire I don't know if you guys can hear you can hear that we got a, ourselves a misfire here so I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling coils until something happens All right, cylinder number two, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. Not a big change. Slight, slight change, let's say that. Cylinder number four. Now this is chugging. Cylinder number six, same thing, chugging. Cylinder number eight, very little change, if any at all. So I've got an issue with cylinder number two and cylinder number eight on this side. Let's check out the, <coughs> let's check out the other side. All right, so we're looking at cylinder number one, and we do have an issue with cylinder number one. Cylinder number three, hardly any change. Cylinder number uh, five, little change. Cylinder number seven, and a pretty big change. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pull a coil wire while it's running of a good coil. So this one's good. This thing is shocking me. You can see it working. Let's pull one off of a bad coil wire. Nothing. I can barely hear it. So, we've either got, so we've either got four bad coils or something's wrong with my MSC. I'm skeptical to think that four coils would go out at the same time, but I mean, you never know. It's, life is pretty crazy sometimes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and replace coil number two with a new coil that I have and see if I can get the spark to get a little bit hotter and see if the idle picks up a little bit. 
I'm going to go ahead and pull the coils off of my 4.8 that I have sitting right here. If you were doing this without any extra coils, you could go ahead and just swap bad cylinder with the good cylinder. Just go ahead and unbolt them, swap them, and see if you get any kind of changes in the spark. If you don't get any changes in the spark, you have other issues. If you do get changes in the spark, then you're going to have to go ahead and um, replace the bad coil. Okay, so some of you might ask, okay, if you have a misfire, why did you go after the coils first? Why didn't you do a compression test? Why didn't you do, you know, check your uh, movement on your valve train? And uh, a simple reason for that is because this was the fastest thing I could check. Just disconnecting my coil will not only help me identify the cylinder since the MSD doesn't give you any check engine lights, uh, you have to kind of figure it out on your own. So we just go cylinder by cylinder. Disconnecting the coil won't tell you the coil is bad. It'll tell you that you have a problem with that cylinder. So I noticed on two, on one side, two coils had a very weak response. And I noticed on, on the opposite side, two coils had a very weak response as well. So I went ahead and started with that and I disconnected the coil wire at the spark plug. And I saw that the spark was weak. If the spark was good, then I would go ahead and move on to the compression test and then maybe check everything else, but the spark was bad. So that only gives us two options. Well, actually three if you wanna get complicated. One, you can check the connections on your MSD box, make sure you have proper ground, proper power. Uh, the second thing is replace your coil to see if it, um, the spark comes back. And the last thing is to replace the MSD box because you might have a bad driver, a bad transistor inside, and you're gonna have to replace your MSD box, which I'm hoping that's not the case because I've had some really, really bad luck with this MSD box. So I'm gonna go ahead and start replacing one each coil one by one and see if it makes a difference. Okay, so I've installed one new coil and I left the, th uh, the third coil disconnected on this side. So I've got number eight, number four, and number two hooked up right now. I'm gonna go ahead and start it and see how it runs. Then I'm gonna disconnect it from the electrical connector and see if uh, RPM changes significantly. If it doesn't, I'm gonna check the uh, spark at the spark plug and we're gonna go from there. All right guys, so I've already replaced the four coils that I thought were bad. Um, and ended up doing the exact same thing, no change whatsoever. There was like a very tiny, tiny change, but it was pretty insignificant. The difference between a, a good cylinder and a bad cylinder is way too obvious to just assume that it's a, it's a bad coil. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, on the bad cylinders, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn the key on and I'm gonna take my DMM. I'm gonna read power on pretty much every single coil. I'm gonna start with the bad cylinders, make sure I have the correct voltage on every one and make sure they're all similar to each other. Uh, hopefully they are and then we can move on to the next step. I've, I've already checked the grounds for the box and I've already checked the grounds for the coils. So there's very few things that can be left before I have to assume the MSD 6014 is the one at fault. Okay, so I've already checked the voltage at uh, while the truck is off. We're looking at around 11 and a half volts while the truck is running. We're looking at about 13 and a half volts. I checked both the good coil in the middle and the bad coil on the end. They both read exactly the same. Disconnect one, nothing happens. Disconnect the other one, idle goes really low. So I've already checked the grounds, like I said before. And if you guys know the way these MSD harnesses are set up, all four coils on each bank share the same ground. So that one's tied into that one, tied into that one, tied into that one. And that goes to one part of the head. And then the four on the other side go to the other side of the head. The only issue is that we've got two cylinders per side that are bad, so it's not a ground issue. And I know the box is getting full voltage because I'm seeing that at the coils. So now I, I'm kind of at a loss. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that the MSD 
is not providing sufficient dwell for the two coils in the middle per bank. I'm gonna do a little bit more testing and I'll be right back. Okay, just to make sure that I didn't have any problems with the carburetor, I went ahead and installed it on our duster. Um, I've posted about it on my personal Instagram page uh, at the night wrench right there in the corner. You can see that my Demon is now perfectly installed here. Um, I just reversed the fuel rail, added a regulator to the 318, and will it run? Let's find out. It'll probably run a little bit choppy because it's uh, the engine's cold right now, but. It runs. Let's let off the throttle. Yeah. So it's cold right now, so the engine's gonna run a little bit rough, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was on my truck. Uh, and I've already driven the car around as soon as it gets warmed up. Uh, so it's not an issue with the carburetor. Listen to that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the carburetor. So, next on my list is to probably replace the MSD box. I've already uh, filed a claim with MSD January of 2020, believe it or not. We are in September, almost October of 2020. And if you guys have been following me on the channel, uh, every time I call MSD, I always have an issue with them saying oh yeah 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 we'll send you the label you stick it on the box and you send it to us well every single time i call i never receive the label every single t day i call to ask them about the label they said they sh i should have already received the label and then i asked them for a confirmation and they're like oh there's no confirmation so i've already pulled off the box this is going to be sent back what i ended up doing i said hey msd look just give me your address Tell me what the RMA number is, and I'm going to pay for shipping myself. And they said, okay, sounds good. So they gave me the RMA number. They gave me the address. And I'm going to go ahead and send it to them right now. So hopefully I get the MSD box fairly soon. Okay, so it took a couple of weeks, but this is what I got. They told me uh, to go ahead and swap the box out and send the whole box um, with everything included back to them. And I'm just going to keep the box. So I'm going to go ahead and install the new 6014 uh, into my truck. And we will go from there. All right. So I've got the brand spanking new box reinstalled into my truck. I installed the vacuum line to see if uh, the map sensor working. I just plugged in the two plugs. Set it to custom one, uh, which is what I had on my old box. I went ahead and imported the timing map that I was using before onto here just to make sure it was in a timing map issue and I'm going to go ahead and start it Put it in neutral push the brake keep the throttle down a little bit and No more, no more misfire. It is running as good as it was running before the box messed up. So confirmed your MSD box is messed up. If you've gone through everything like I did and everything ends up the same, chances are you're gonna have to call up MSD and ask them to replace your box for you. I am going to look into other ways to use the factory ECU. One of my viewers actually mentioned that that was possible and I looked it up and sure enough, it was actually possible to set up your stock PCM. So I'm gonna be getting in touch with a couple more people uh, to see if I can get it going and hopefully just get rid of the MSD equipment. I haven't been impressed so far even though I do end up recommending it, I don't know if I would continue doing carbureted swaps if the MSD 6014 is pretty much the only option. I know we also have the Daytona sensors box, but I haven't had a chance to review that one 
yet. So if, if anybody from Daytona Sensors is watching, hit me up. I do want to work with you guys. So that about does it. Truck is back on the road and running 100%. So I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.